Word Feast, Eric Hawele is my name, and I'm back again to share with you the message which I have entitled as Redeemed from Sicknesses, Cases, and Poverty, Part 3. Redeemed from Sicknesses, Cases, and Poverty, Part 3. I have done Redeemed from Sicknesses, Cases, and Poverty, Part 1 and Part 2. And if you have not watched any of them, I advise you, pause this one, go to my YouTube channel, which is Eric Habwele, download part 1 and part 2, watch all of them, then watch this one, because I'm just going to take off from where I, I, I stopped in part 2, up to wherever the Holy Spirit is going to lead me. And I can assure you that at the end of this message, your life is never going to be the same. At the end of this message, you shall never regret of ever watching watching this message. Now, uh, 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 today I'm dealing with redeemed from uh, 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 poverty. Now, what is poverty? You know, poverty is not a state of lacking money. No. Poverty is a state of lacking what Christ has provided. Of lacking what Christ has provided. You know what? Poverty is as wicked as sin itself. Poverty is as wicked as sin itself. Now, this case of poverty, today, it is still working in the lives of believers. This case is validated in the lives of believers through ignorance. You know, ignorance is the one which makes this case to, 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 to manifest as if it is still working in the lives of believers. Now, Hear yeah, what the Bible says in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. The scripture says, For ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, that ye through his poverty might be rich. So, you know, Jesus Christ, he became poor, that we, we who believe in his name, may become rich. So, by this alone, Jesus, he defeated defeated the case of poverty. And when Jesus Christ died and rose, he conquered this, uh, 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 this poverty. He conquered the spirit of poverty. So, as a child of God, you don't have the right to be poor. As a child of God, it's illegal for you to be poor. But this poverty is still uh, rooming in the lives of believers today. How? By ignorance. By ignorance. You know, this case of the law, it is, it is validated in the lives of believers today by ignorance, you know, by ignorance. Now, listen to what the Bible says in the book of Galatians. Galatians chapter 3 verse 13, the Bible says, Christ hath redeemed us from the case of the law, being made a case for us, for it is written, Cased is everyone that hangeth on a tree that the blessings of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So now, Jesus Christ, he became a case for us. He became a case for us that blessings may come upon us. Now, 
What is the case of the law? What is the case of the law? When the Bible or when the New Testament talks about the law, it 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 it, it refers to the uh, to the Pentateuch, the Pentateuch, and the Pentateuch it refers the five uh, the five books, uh, the first five books of the law, which is Genesis, Exodus, Numbers, Leviticus, and Deuteronomy. A lot of stuff, a lot of commandments are given there. A lot, a lot of laws are given there. A lot of laws were given to man to follow there. Now, man, he never managed to follow everything that was written there. And the, 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 there was this, the, 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 the law was that if you break one, you have broken all of them. So man, he failed to meet the demand of the law. Therefore, man, he became cased under the law. Man, he became cased under the law. Why? Because he failed to meet the requirement of the blessing under the law. You know, the, 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 the same point that took, it talks about the law when we go in the book of uh, Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 28, it gives a variety of the laws, the variety of the commandment whereby if you break this, these cases will come upon you. If you break this, this poverty will come upon you. If you break this, this and that will happen to you. So, you know, this is the dilemma which man he found himself into. So, therefore, naturally, man was under a case under the law. So, now, Jesus Christ when he came, he fulfilled that which the painter took demanded for, for, for us to, 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 to fulfill. So Jesus, he fulfilled on our behalf. And when Jesus Christ fulfilled on our behalf, he said, Whosoever who believe in me, he is free from all the verdict that the painter took had put man into. So right now, Jesus Christ, he has redeemed us. Jesus, he redeemed us. Jesus, he redeemed us from the case of the law, from the case of poverty. So therefore, you and I today, we are redeemed from poverty. Now, hear what the Bible says in the book of 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 8. The Bible says, For bodily exercise profiteth little, but godliness is profitable unto all things. Having, having promise of the life that now is, and of that which is to come. Meaning, the life that we live right now, there are promises that are, 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 are for us. There are promises that are for us now. What are those promises which are for us now? They are good, healthy. What are the promises which are for us in this life now? They are for you and I to prosper. So, you know, a lot of people, they say, you know, we we, we are going to be okay when we get into heaven. Things are going to get better when we get into heaven. No, 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 no. Things are supposed to get better right now. Because right now is the time for everything to be okay. Now, you know, for body exercise is profited little, but godliness is profited unto all things, having promise of uh, of the life that now is. So, right now, in the life where we are right now, we have the promises of, of, of living a good life. We have the promises of the prosperity of God. We have the promises of, of, of the goodness of God. We have the promises of the goodness of God right in the life where, where we, are, we are right now. Now, listen again to what the Bible says in the book of uh, uh, Philippians. Philippians chapter 4 verse 19, scripture says, But my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. So now, you know, when he says he shall supply all your needs, all your need, he shall supply all your need, you know, it means, you know, wealthy is part of the need. It means financial, you know, finances, what to wear, what to eat, so on and so forth. So God, he needs to take care of all those things. Why? Because you are his student. Why? Because <coughs> you are his child, you know. You know what? It is the goodness of the father to decollate his children with good things. It is the pressure of the father to decollate his offspring or his children or his descendants with good things. So God, he wants you and I to have good things right now, right now. He has given us all the wealthy that we need to survive. Now, like I said to say, you know, he shall, my God, he shall supply all your need. It means, the need, it means financial.
financial, it means physical things. Physical things are included there. Manage are included there. What to wear, uh, what to eat. Everything that you need for your well living. Now, again, listen to what the Bible says in the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter uh, 6, verse 33. Scripture says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. What is it that is going to be added unto you? These are physical things. These are physical things. Money, car, house, every good thing. These are the things that shall be added unto you. You know what? When he was teaching them here, he said, do not be like Gentiles. Do not be like Gentiles. Why? Because Gentiles, they are seeking after these, 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 these earthly things, these earthly things. But you first seek this, the kingdom of God. When you seek the kingdom of God, all these things which the Gentiles are looking after, they shall be added unto you now. The word Gentile here, it is being referred to as non-believers. You and I today, we may believe, we, may, we, we can agree to say, Non-believers today, they don't have the business of seeking God. Non-believers today, what they are seeking for is money. What they are seeking for is fame. What they are seeking for is glory. What they are seeking for is to have cars, houses, a lot of, 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 of physical things. These are the things which the Gentiles or non-believers are seeking today. And God knows to say, you and I today, we need them. You and I today, we need a car. You and I today, we need a house where we can have a proper uh, living. But God is saying, you know what? Inasmuch as I know that you need all those things, let not your concern, let not your main, your main focus be there. Your main focus should be on me. When your main focus is on me, all these things I shall add them unto you. All these things I shall add them unto you. So <coughs> do not leave the word of God to go and seek for something else. No. Stay within the parameter of the word of God. When you stay within the parameter of the word of God, all these things are added unto you. It is the goodness and it is the pleasure of the father to decollect to decollect his children with good things god knows to say you and i we need all these things that the gentiles are seeking after you know god he knows he knows that we all need these things but he said the formula for you and i to get into these things is first to remain focused on his word which is the word of god now here again what the bible says in the book of uh, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, the scripture says, According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. Now, what this scripture is trying to tell us is, God, he has given us everything. God, he has given us everything that pertains to life and godliness. That pertains to life and godliness. What the scripture means here by saying what pertains to life, what pertains to life is something that you need in order to live a good life. Something that you need for you to live a healthy life. And what is it that you need in this generation for you to live a healthy life is that you need money. You need cars. You need houses. You need proper, you know, proper sanitation all around you. So, scripture says, God, he has given already all these things unto us. Now, again, there is a key factor here in this scripture. It continues by saying... <coughs> Through the knowledge, through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. So now, uh, uh, these things, they only manifest in our lives or they only materialize in our lives when we know that God has given, them, uh, has given us all these things. So now, the key factor there then is knowledge. When you have knowledge about what God has given you, you take possession of it. Just like I am telling you right now, because there are some people who are having a misconception to say, God he is using poverty to humble them. Some people, they are saying, poverty is a sign of humility to God. No, that's ignorance, my friend. God do not allow poverty to come your way as the way of humbling you. When Jesus Christ said, he became poor that we may be rich. So, poverty does not at all come from God. I say it, poverty is as wicked as sin itself. 
If Jesus can use poverty, he cannot redeem us from poverty. So he redeemed us from poverty. Why? Because poverty does not come from God. And hey, let me tell you something. Like we said to say, is divine power given as all things that pertain to life and godliness? Meaning, God, his party has been done. What, what do I mean by God, his party has been done? Is, by, is that God, he has given. He has given. So, God has been given. What is expected of us? What is expected of us is to receive. What is expected of us is to receive. And let me tell you something. In man and man relationship, it is good to give than to receive. Man to man relationship, it is more blessed to give than to receive. But in God and, and man relationship, it is good to receive than to give. Because anything that you can ever give to God is the one who gave you. So, in short, let me put it this way. The New Testament, the New Testament is the testament of receiving. The New Testament is the testament of receiving. The Old Testament is the testament of giving. The New Testament is the testament of receiving. So, what is expected of you and me today is to receive. Why? Because all that you can ever need, all that you can ever want, God has given you. Like, you know, His divine power has given unto us all things. All things. All things. Hallelujah, somebody. I feel like I'm talking. God has given you and me all things. So now, when all things have been given, what is required of you and me is to receive. Is to receive. Receive your prosperity right now by the virtue of the knowledge I'm sharing with you. And I can assure you, if you pull these words in practice, poverty shall never near you, not even one single day. Poverty shall not near you, not even one single day. Hallelujah. Go punish the devil. Poverty will never reach you, not even one single day. Now, listen to what the Bible says in the book of uh, uh, John. John chapter 1 verse 16, scripture says, And of his fullness have we all received. You see? We have received, and of his fullness have we all received, and grace for grace. And grace for grace. Now, of the fullness of who? The fullness of Jesus. Of the fullness of Jesus, have we all received grace for grace? Meaning, Jesus is full of grace. Is full of grace. When you squeeze Jesus, what comes out of him is grace. When you press Jesus from every side, what comes out of him is grace. So, and of his fullness have we all received and grace for grace. Now, the word fullness here is a Greek word called preloma. Preloma. And preloma, it means complete. It means complete. So here it means the completeness of Jesus is grace. Jesus is complete of grace. Jesus is full of grace. Now, <laughs> the word grace here, it is a Greek word called charis. Charis. And charis, it means loving kindness or favor. Loving kindness or favor, meaning the fullness or the completeness of God or the completeness of Jesus is loving kindness and favor. Meaning, in Jesus Christ, everything that you find in him is loving kindness and favor. Loving kindness and and favor loving kindness and favor and you know the grace the same word grace carries it also means christian salvation grace it also means christian salvation now <coughs> the word salvation is taken from a greek word called sotelia sotelia and sotelia it means the, the wealthy of god healthy of god you know, the goodness of God. So, of his fullness, have we all received 
wealthy after wealth. It is the goodness of God that gives us the ability to create wealthy. So in Christ, we are rich. In Christ, we have wealthy. Hallelujah, somebody. Again, listen to what the Bible says in the book of Colossians. Colossians chapter 1 verse 12, scripture says, Giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet, to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. So we 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 we, we you know the word the word meet here it means qualify. It means qualify. So it reads giving thanks unto the Father which has made us qualify to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. So we have now qualified. To be the saints in the light. Now the word saint here, it is taken from a Greek word called Hagios. And Hagios, it means the most holy. The most holy. It does not mean somebody who does not make mistakes. No, no, no. Saint, it means somebody who is holy. And you and me, we are holy by the virtue of we have Christ in us. So now, giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet which have made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the uh, of the saints in light, who hath delivered us from the powers of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Hey, God, he has delivered us. He has delivered us. So we are delivered. We are delivered from the, the, the powers of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. We have redeem we have we, we have redemption through his blood. Now <coughs> the word redemption there is taken from a Greek word called apolutrosis. Apolutrosis. And apolutrosis it means uh, 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 something that is affected by payment or ransom. Something that is uh, affected by payment or ransom. So you were delivered. There was a ransom that was paid for you and me to be freed. You know, to be freed. To be freed. So we are free from the powers of darkness. Now, what is the powers of darkness? What is the powers of darkness? The powers of darkness is poverty. The powers of darkness sicknesses. The powers of darkness is, you know, you know, you know, you know, uh, cases, you know. So God, he redeemed us from all those things. He translated us from all those things into the kingdom of his dear son. So now, redemption, which is apolutrosis, which means uh, 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 something that is affected by payment or ransom, of ransom, I mean. So now, the same word apolutrosis is also means Christian salvation, like I said. Christian salvation. And I said also to say salvation is taken from a Greek word called soteria. And soteria, it means wealthy. So, you know, we are prosperous in Christ. In Christ, we have everything that we ever need. Now, <coughs> don't forget that I said the New Testament is the testament of receiving. Is the testament of receiving. The Old Testament is the testament of, 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 of you know, it, the testament that uh, uh, demands you to give something. But the New Testament is the testament of giving. The testament of giving, you know. So God has given. All we do is what? Receive. All we do is receive. So, the New Testament is the testament of receiving. Now, listen to what the Bible says in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 3. For I delivered unto you, first of all, uh, that which I also received. How that Christ died for our sins according to the scripture. Paul, he received the message that Christ died for our sin. So the message that he received, he went to give it unto others who should also receive it. So the New Testament is the testament of receiving. Again, listen to what the Bible says in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1. Wherefore, Seeing we have this ministry, as we have received the mercy, we faint not. So, we have received the mercy. 
we have received the mercy. As the, 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 the New Testament is the testament of receiving. We have received the mercy. We have received the mercy. Again, the Bible says in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 1, We then, as workers together with him, beseech you also that ye receive not the grace of God in vain. So, you know, they received the grace. So, he was urging them that the grace you received, not let not it be in vain. So, receive mercy. Receive the grace. Receive the message. The New Testament is the testament of receiving. The New Testament is the testament of receiving. Again, Galatians chapter uh, 3, verse, uh, verse, verse, verse 2 says, This only would I learn of you. Received ye the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Received ye, received. So you are asking them to say, when you received the Holy Spirit, did you observe the law or you received the Spirit by the hearing of faith? So the New Testament is the testament that is all about receiving receiving so you have received the prosperity of god you are redeemed from poverty you are not poor no 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 you are rich in christ in discovering the riches of christ the bible says do not be afraid it is his pleasure to give you his kingdom to give you his kingdom he has given to you and me <laughs> His prosperity. Hallelujah, somebody. Hello, viewers all over the world. This is all I had for you. Hope you are blessed by the little I have shared with you. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is Eric Habwele, as well as to press the bell icon over there. Not only that, don't also forget to like my YouTube page. Not only that, also don't forget to share my YouTube page. With that, we all together, we are painting the blue marble planet with the gospel of Christ, for this is the mandate which I have for this generation, which is painting the blue marble planet with the gospel of Christ as the blue marble planet is rotating over on the corner there. We are flooding it, we are blanketing it with the gospel of Christ and my YouTube name is the one which is appearing on the screen which is Eric Hawele as well as my Facebook name. You can meet me on the on Facebook using the same name. We shall be able to communicate. And then my contact line. It is the one which is appearing on the screen as well as my 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 WhatsApp contact. You can contact me using the same line. We shall be able to communicate. Thank you very much for being with me up to the end. God bless you. Shalom. Shalom. You are the bird of me.